I use these for hunting when I'm out on my permissions, on my private property permissions, hunting and skinning game. Um, that's what I use these knives for. I don't use them with any violent intention, things like that. So I wanted to just clear that up quickly because I know there's a lot going on with the knife crime and etc. But I just wanted to clear that up before anyone starts making any assumptions, saying that I'm making these in a violent way because I'm not. I'm making these for hunting purposes only. I'm fascinated by the amount of materials you can use, the steel types uh, and things like that. So just wanted to clear that up quickly, guys. These aren't being used in a violent way and none of these leave my bedroom unless they're going onto my private property permissions. That's the main point here, private property. I can carry whatever size knife I want on them because they're not public permissions, they're not footpaths, they're privately owned properties that I have permission to be on and I have signed slips upstairs from the landowner saying that I have permission to hunt on those properties. So you can't go carrying any of these knives around in an open field or a public footpath because that is completely illegal. You're breaking the law right there. But what I'm doing is legal because I'm on private property. It's, there's, it's only me on there and the landowner and I have permission to be on there. So hopefully that clears a few things up before anyone starts making any assumptions. So yeah, let's get into the first knife I ever built. So this is, I don't really know what this is to be honest with you. This is just like a hunting knife I made. This has red G10 uh, handles with six millimeter brass pins. So this was the I class this as my first proper knife because this is when I first started getting into it and buying all the materials and buying all the tools. So I'd say this is my first proper knife from where it took off. But got the drop point hunter styled uh, blade. Got some jimping along the spine just for added grip. Uh, gives you a bit more control when you're working with the knife. So as you can see, a couple flaws with this knife. This is not my. Uh, this is none of my knives are perfect. I like to put that out there, guys. None of my knives are perfect, and I'm in no way a professional or tell like in a point where I know everything because I really don't. I'm learning loads and loads every day, and there's loads I struggle with. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm being cocky or anything like that because I'm not. I'm just making these to show you guys what I've been up to over lockdown and hopefully to interest some of you um, in a couple of these knives. So I've got this one here. Uh, by the way, I'll be talking about whether I'll be selling them and things like that. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, guys. So this this is it. I gave me a bit of an issue by here with the epoxy. I wasn't able to clean it very well because um, I was using a five-minute epoxy and it dried fairly quickly on me, as you can see. But overall, a pretty nice knife. Uh, I'm going to go grab a ruler right now and we'll actually do some measurements of these. Okay, guys, so I just went and got my ruler just so we can do some measurements because I know um, a couple of people are going to be interested in how, how big these are. So... On this one here, we'll measure from the tip to the uh, base of the handle. And we're looking at about about seven inches, I'd say. Give or take, it's about seven inches. Bring it a bit closer for you. So yeah, well, it's about six inches and three fourths. I'd just say it's roughly about seven inches. As you can see. Red G10 handles, really nice knife, got a nice weight to it. And then we'll get on to the second knife I made. This is where things started getting a bit, um, what's the word, a bit, a bit nicer, shall we say, because I started to buy a lot more tools. Um, the pins weren't perfectly centered on the red handled one I just showed you, but on here they're all straight. That's because I bought myself a drill press. I bought myself a lot more tools. Like I said, none of these knives are perfect, but we'll get into that. So we have, Go to the handle first, a blue canvas micarta handle with six millimeter brass pins. All brass pins on, all these knives that have brass pins on them guys are all six millimeters because I only use six mil brass pins at the moment. So we've got two six millimeter brass pins and a lanyard tube. This is a six millimeter outer diameter tube and a five millimeter inner diameter tube on this uh, lanyard little tube at the back. So we've got a mirror finish blade here. As you can see the reflection of the camera, you can see me in there briefly mirror finished blade because I really wanted something nice on this um, the mirror finish takes absolutely hours because it's about it's sanding from 120 grit removing every single scratch all the way up to 2000 grit and then I buffed this knife as well then um, on my buffing machine just with some auto sole compound with a sizal stitched wheel on my buffer it's just an old bench grind I just convert into a buffing machine but that's how I did it um, got the edge on here as well Pretty sharp edge on here, as you can see. It's a 
pretty sharp edge, nice point. Uh, another nice skinner, nice and flush around the backs of the spine and all into the handle. Nice and flush around here. A couple issues by here, I actually had a hole by here for weight reduction and to let the epoxy go through and bond the two sides of the scales. But when I was grinding and shaping the handle, I actually opened up one of those holes. So instead of it being a hole like this, I ground a little bit opened and now it went to like a C like that. And that's what you can see there. It's the hole is like that, but you can only see the bottom part of it because the rest is in the handle. But that's what you can see by there. So like I said, not perfect, but a really nice knife overall. Probably one of my favorites because of the mirror finish on it and how long it took to actually do that finish. But I think it was definitely worth it. So yeah. Blue canvas micarta scales, hand sanded to 1,500 grit, I should say as well. And these little 45 degrees at the front of the handles, I took to 2,000 grit. And I took the whole handle scales to 1,500 grit with sandpaper. And 2,000 grit on the uh, blade and then buffed with auto saw on a stitched sizal wheel on my buffer. So that's the second knife. Okay, so this is the third knife, and this one was a bit of a, a bit of a work experience, I should say, because I ended up making my first ever Kydex sheath for this as well. So we'll talk about the sheath first. So this is two millimeter thick um, olive drab green Kydex that I used for this knife. This was my first ever attempt at a sheath. Um, these, um, what are they called? Sorry, these rivets. Sorry, I'm not too sure what size they are but I drill them out with a 6.5 mil drill bit. I will leave a link to the rivet in the description down below because I buy these off of eBay. So I'll leave a link to them down below if anyone's interested. But uh, the Kydex I use is also from eBay, so I'll link that as well for you. This is two millimeter thick Kydex, um, olive drab green. I hand sanded the sheath to 240 grit. which just started on 240 grit and finished with 240, just to make it look a little bit nicer around here. It kind of looks like one piece of plastic. But this knife, if we get it out, this knife kind of went wrong. This knife was heat treated um, with the two other neck knives I'm going to show you soon. It was in the same like cycling, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I made the three together and I heat treated the three of them together. The, this one and the two neck knives that I'll be showing you soon. But um, this knife went a little bit wrong because I ground away a bit too much of the handle instead of sanding it with sandpaper like I should have. But I tried to cheat and grind it away. Gave me a problem that the handle wouldn't sit flat um, because obviously I created a dip because I was grinding in one spot and not in the other. So I created a dip and it wouldn't sit flat at all. So it wouldn't have actually been able to sit flush with the handle scales because it wasn't a flat back. So I'm thinking, what can I do with this knife? And then one of my friends gave me the idea to actually paracord wrap it. So we decided, yeah, that'd be a good idea. So I paracord wrapped it with some, uh, this is, I think this is... Yeah, this is two mil thick paracord. It's two millimeters thick um, because these beads have a two mil hole in them. These are just some glow in the dark beads. They do work. I don't really know how I can show you, but they do glow. Uh, pretty bright, actually. I added these because I make a lot of my knives around the hunting, like I've said to you all. So I think of problems I encounter whilst out hunting. And a couple of times, me and my grandpa have been hunting together. And we've put the knife down after skinning something at, like in the dark when it's dark. And we can't find the knife. So I thought, well, you know, we'll see, we do find them in the end, but it's a lot harder. So I thought, you know, I'll add some glow in the dark beads on here. So it makes it a lot easier for you to find your knife. And it does look pretty cool. So this knife is another drop point hunter. It's just a style I seem to like a lot. Uh, jimping on the back here. I put this in with a triangular needle file. Nice grip and just gives you a bit more control. Nice edge on here too. Um, so yeah. This was just a, I'm not too sure what finish this is actually. I think it might be a 240 grit belt finish, but I'll show you it into the sheath. It just goes in there nicely. It won't come out either, as you see. If I hold these beads, you can see that there's no noise at all. So no noise, comes out nice and easily. It clicks in there nice and easily. So not too bad for the first sheath. I just remembered actually, I didn't actually measure the second knife. So let's just do that quickly for you. This knife here is five and a half inches. The uh, mirror finished micarta knife, micarta scales knife, sorry. 
This one's looking at about but about five and a half inches. So let's put that one to the side. And then this knife we just did is about six, about six and a quarter inches. It's about six and a quarter inches this one. So they all seem to be around the six inch mark. Um, that's obviously full length. Um, the blade is about three and a half inches, this blade is. So the next lot of knives we've got, uh, it's, it's actually two, but I'll show you them one by one. This one I just finished up today. This is my most recent one. I made this sheath today. Uh, this is an olive drab green Kydex sheath, the same um, sheet that I used on the last knife, olive drab green, two mil thick, same rivets. I'll link them down below for you all. Um, 240 grit as well around the sides, just to make it look a bit nicer. This is a mirror finished neck knife I made for my grandpa, because my grandpa does a lot for me. Um, I do all my hunting with my grandpa, and if it wasn't for my grandpa, I wouldn't even be interested in hunting. I would have never have gone hunting. I do all my shooting with my grandpa as well. Um, so yeah, my grandpa does a lot for me. He's also supported me a lot with the knife making. So I made this as a little thank you for him. Uh, mirror finished blade, same procedure as the last one. Hand sanded to 2000 grit, starting out at 120. I went once where I go, so if you guys want to know the uh, way I go with my hand sanding, the grip progression, I go 120, uh, this is all hand sanding, 120, 240, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, and then finish off with 2000. When I go into the finer grits, I finish every one after going at the 45 degree angles because that removes the most material. I will um, do draw filing, um, draw sanding that I call it. It's like draw filing, but it's sanding, so I, just, I call it draw sanding, where I just sand parallel like this. I don't go back and forth. I just start here and just pull straight to the tip. Lift up, pull straight to the tip. Lift up, pull straight to the tip. Lift up with the sandpaper, pull straight to the tip. It's not going back and forth. It's starting at the base of the handle, pulling forward to the tip lifting the sandpaper up, bringing it back to the start and doing the same because that gets all the scratch marks running parallel to the tip. And then buffed on a stitch size or wheel with some autosol polishing, metal polishing compound. Um, so yeah, mirror finish blade on this one. Not a neck knife. Blue canvas my carter. This was an off cut that I had left from the other one, the other knife I showed you. I bought the little block of it and this was an off cut. This is how I decided to use it for this. My grandpa also told me that he liked this material when I showed him the other knife. He said he really liked the material, so I thought, you know, it kind of suits well. I had a little off cut left, so I thought, you know, I'll make this. Six millimeter brass pins as well. Hand sanded these scales to 800 grit. But as you can see, all nice and flush around the uh, whole knife. No gaps, all runs nice and flush. I really do like these mirror finishes, but they're just a pain in the ass to do, but I think they're definitely worth it. I only really do them for the knives that are gonna be kind of shown off. So I did it once for my first knife, my first attempt of it, um, that was this one. And this one, I don't think my grandpa's gonna use it out in the field. It has an edge on it, but I don't think he'll be using it. So I did the mirror finish on it, because it'll probably be sh um, on a shelf or something being shown off. Um, so I thought, you know, it just makes sense to do it like that. But all my working knives that I intend to use in the field, I don't do a mirror finish on it because it just shows scratches a lot easier. Um, so yeah, this is the, what's this, the fourth knife I've shown you. Uh, hand sanded the front of these 45s to 2000 grit. Um, let's do these on the uh, disc sander I do on the side of my belt sander. Set it to 45 degrees to set these little angles in. Just a little finishing touch, doesn't really do anything beneficial to the knife. Just uh, makes it look a bit nicer I think and then hand sanded these scales to 800 grit. So that's this one. And the little sheath it goes with. Fits in there nicely. No movement at all. Comes out nice and easy. So yeah, that's that one. This is going away today to my grandpa. So the final knife, which was also finished pretty much today as well. Personally, one of my favorite knives, I think this is probably my favorite, is this. 
Right, so, firstly, can we all just appreciate that texture in on there? See that? Yeah, you can see that. Look at that texture in on their scales. This is Blue G10. Just look at that texture in. Just looks beautiful. And this one, on this side too. I think, I hope this is camera is picking this up. Yeah, there we are. Just look at that texture in all over this knife. This is a beautiful knife. It looks kind of purpley, but it's not. It's a really bright blue, like a, like a, like a summery sunshine blue. I'd describe this as, but if the camera's picking up, it's purple, but it's really not. I'll add some pictures in of all the knives so you can see them, and then you'll see that it's actually like a really nice blue. Put that pattern in as well at the top and underneath on the belly. So this is, like I said, blue G10 uh, handles with six millimeter brass pins. Uh, this is a 240 grit satin finish I put on this knife. And you can kind of see what I meant when I said I do the draw sanding method. You can see all the scratch marks that you can see run parallel to the tip. But you can see it there, they all run to the tip because it makes it look a little bit neater. This is a satin finish, only taking this to 240 grit. I started at 120 grit and doing the draw file and then doing the draw sanding on the last uh, strokes of the with the 120 then on the 240 um, just going from the back of the handle straight to the tip nice edge on here as well because this is just too nice to use i think i've never had this pattern come out in a g10 before but yeah you can see all sitting flush with the spine all sits nice and flush no gaps so yeah 240 grit satin finish length of this one and I'll show you the length of the other one because I keep forgetting so this one it's about three and a half inches it's about three and a half inches this one um, and it'll probably be around the same size as the other one this blade is a little bit longer so this may be around four yeah this is this this one here is pretty much four inches um, the one that's going to my grampy pretty much four inches so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching guys stay tuned for more content on the knives thank you